Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a new year, and I say we get it kicked off right. Today is January 5th, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 276, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Ken Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to a tutorial on relative color with Mika, with Mika-san, the lovely maid girl that we were talking about last week. And uh, this is part two of the episode, so if you want to go back and see part one, then go ahead and click that. And I realize I did not have the Facebook open, but that's okay because I'm going to see if I can stealthily pull that up while I am showing you something. So in the meantime, while I distract you, let's talk about how to make an amazing piece of a pink-haired maid girl, right? First, you're going to start like this. Imagine it's like a drawing book, okay? It's a drawing book. So you start with a sketch, right? Just think of it as your shapes, right? Laying in your shapes, finding your flow. Then second step is, you know, just kind of refine those, refine those shapes and, and put in your values, right? Super easy. And then, uh, oh, whoops, I totally forgot about uh, step two. This is step two. Step two is begin to refine. Step three is actually refine it. And then step four, I'll just put the color on. Oh, that, that was easy. Okay, I just saved you guys a whole bunch of time. I saved you guys 40 minutes of like me blabbing and stuff. Okay, so now you know how to make an amazing picture. And in the meantime, <laughs> If you can't tell, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. We're going to go into detail about all that stuff. But uh, stealthily pulling up the Facebook so we can look at that. And speaking of Facebook, there we go. All right. Let's take a stroll down the lovely lane, people, because you guys have been being amazing and submitting your work. Wow, I actually really like, really like this one. Whoever did that one, kudos to you. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to see all these amazing pieces for yourself, please just type in that tiny URL slash Fanner. Go check them out for yourself. Like the page. Submit, uh, oh look, it separates it by year now, that's kinda cool. And go check them all out for yourself and get featured on the show. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I think that catches us up to where we were. I'm pretty sure, but just in case. Oh yes, I definitely remember that baby Jesus. Let's, that's a good book bookmark. That's a good bookmark that you'll never forget. Alrighty, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into Z tutorial. Now that I am done goofing around, just had to get all the jokes out of the way. Let's talk about Mika because this is quite a big difference from where you guys saw last time we met, right? Last time we met, we were way the heck back here. So, but luckily I have prepared a time lapse and I will, I'm prepared to talk you through it. It's probably gonna be like 15 minutes. And uh, just think of it, we're gonna take it easy, right? Cause I know all you're busy with your new year's resolutions. So we're just gonna take today easy. We're gonna, well, but there's still gonna be some learning involved, but for the beginning, we're gonna just be kicking back, talking about stuff and you guys get to enjoy this time lapse of uh, how I got from there to the actual final piece. And then today we're gonna be talking about relative color, which is basically um, basically like picking proper colors to work within your piece, right? Especially with your lighting, depending on your lighting, depending on your exposure, which is another thing that we'll talk about. Um, and that has to do with like the light that's behind the piece. I'll just go ahead and flip back really quickly. So if you look right here, this was my original light, uh, this was my reference for the color palette that I was going to be using, right? And you notice how the outside of the windows is very like bright, almost kind of like blown out. These leaves are green, yet the ones over here, see on the left side, they're getting blown out to almost like this white color. And this has always really interested me, how when you look outside of the windows, when you take a photograph of an interior and you can see the outside, the outside is always very, very bright. So I wanted to make a piece that kind of capitalized on that or kind of used that same exposure effect or that same exposure feeling, give, this, give us that cool feeling. So that's what we're talking about today and why, like how you can do that and make it look like it's a, more of like a photographic piece, more of a photographic effect. But anyway, let's continue with this. So back to the time-lapse, back to the time-lapse. What I'm doing here is I am line sculpting. You guys have seen me do this many, many times. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on line sculpting, then you can go back a couple weeks ago when we were working on Violet and you can click the picture, click the picture that is on Photoshop right now if you're watching this on YouTube. It'll take you back and you can see a more in-depth episode on line sculpting. All right, but the, the reason why I'm doing this here and I'm working in black and white is because I eventually then move on to sketch lifting where I will turn all the whites in the piece, like I'm just painting the entire picture black and white, and then I will make the whites transparent. I'll make them transparent and then I'll be able to kind of like lay my colors behind. And I will be happy. I'm pretty sure that I have the layers all separated in this piece, I think. Oh crap, please tell me I do. I think I do, uh, oh yeah, I think this is it, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got 
We got it. We got it. Okay, good. Okay, we're good. Okay, anyway, let's go back to where this was. And if you can't tell, I definitely did. <laughs> I resized her head at the end there too because I, once I got it all done, once I started like painting this more realistically, I was like, oh man, her head is like way too big. Got to shrink that down a little bit. But anyway, let's get back to the time lapse. So I'm kind of jumping back in and out of the time lapse because like I said, it is going to take a little while today. It is going to take a little while. We got like two minutes on this one. I think the other ones are about like five, seven minutes long. So if they get end up getting too boring, I'll just kind of skip through them. But in case you wanted to see the, if you wanted to see the process in real time, did I say time lapse? I'm sorry. This is me working in real time. It's actually slowed down a little bit from how fast I usually work just so that way you guys can actually grasp my technique. But anyway, um, yeah, I was actually wanting to, a lot of you guys were asking who Cron Prince was and that's um, Cron Prince, uh, it's K-R-O, but the O is a zero, N-P-R, and then it's a one, right? Cause he's like really edgy like that, one N-Z. So, but it reads Cron Prince. And this guy does a lot of really cool like uh, photographic effects, but he also draws in like this anime style. And uh, for those of you who want to see his work, I will link his DeviantArt in the description of this video. You can go check him out. So I've always really been interested in this guy's art and I love his style. And he does a lot of this like relative color exposure effect type of stuff where he makes his subjects that he paints looks like, it makes it look like it's a photo or like a more of a realistically lit piece. And so naturally I was looking at his art, I was studying his art for a little while and I was like, hey, I wonder if I could do something like that. I wonder if I could like totally just like rip off his style for like one piece and like <laughs> study it and see what I could pull from that, right? Pull from that and take into my future pieces. And this was a really, really fun piece to do. In fact, lately I've just been on this really big kick of drawing my older characters because uh, we did it with, well, Violet's not an older character, but uh, drawing my original characters, you could say. So Violet wasn't an original character. We finished that one. And uh, then we did Wayna for Christmas, which was the Christmas elf. You guys can see that on my DeviantArt as well. And those are all old characters. Those are characters that I drew almost, I think Wayna was from almost 12 years ago. Oh, 13 now, 13 years ago. So it's really cool to, I have all of these characters, including Mika. She's like this pink haired girl, pink haired maid girl. I know it's like super original. Um, you can see, oh yeah, and if you wanna see the original pictures, I'll also link that in my description as well. I gotta put a ton of links on this video today. Hope I can remember them all. But you guys should know my DeviantArt anyway. You can go there and just search Mika and you'll find her. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Oh, something very important that I'm doing right here is I have separated the background elements, the background lines from the character. And now I'm going in there and I'm refining the couch uh, separate from the character. Some people might be, in fact, I even put like this really like dodgy, you know, perspective line thing in there. It's just, here's the vanishing point, that big blue dot, that was the vanishing point. And it's just a really simple one point perspective, but that allows me to lay everything out. So that way it actually does make sense. Like the vanishing point for the couch, um, you know, actually it's mostly just for the couch and the horizon line is really important too, because where you place the horizon line is basically where, well, actually it's not basically, it's exactly where your eyes are. So in this case, because if we go back for a second, let me go back to where that was and I'll skip ahead. Ah, uh, where the heck was it? Oh, there we go. Okay, so if your horizon line is below, wherever the horizon line is, that is where your eye level is. So a low horizon on the piece means that you are going to be looking more upwards at your character. It is going to create a more dramatic feeling and I highly recommend that you guys think about that stuff. But horizon lines, that's gonna be a whole nother tutorial for another time. Right now we're gonna focus on just, you know, getting through this. We'll get through the tutorial or the time lapse, then we'll get to the tutorial on light and color. Relativity, relative color, because that is the most important thing that I can teach you guys today. It's something that I've been wanting to study for a long time and just didn't quite fully understand it. And um, but yeah, more on that in a second. Okay, so what was I talking about? I talked about ripping off Crown Prince. We we already did that. And now, uh, oh yeah, on this kick of doing my original characters. And it's been so fun to do this because I, oh yeah, I have this portfolio. I have this old portfolio. And I, I think I showcased it a long time ago. I, I don't think I actually published the video, but I did it on a live stream. And uh, I'll have to make a video where I actually take some of my favorite pieces out of that old portfolio. So you can see some of my early work, early anime work. And uh, because I loved anime, I was that was basically the whole portfolio. It was all anime girls, it was all 
I mean, I actually draw realistically uh, sized chests now. Back then, I didn't do so much. They were all, you know, very well endowed, you could say. But now I've kind of toned it down a little bit, a little bit more realistically sized, you know, more athletic. But, um, but yeah, I'll have to show you guys some of those pictures because they're amazing. They're still amazing. And I was going through there and I was looking through, I was like, these are like some cool characters. These are actually really cool characters. And I like to reimagine these and kind of like do some more studying, study the artists that I really like, study their techniques and bring my old characters, bring these old characters and sort of do a draw this again. But it's not really like, well, it's kind of like a draw this again, but usually I think you're supposed to like keep the same pose. Are you supposed to like keep the same exact pose and like the background and everything? You're supposed to basically do the same exact thing again. So just bringing back the characters, resurrecting the characters, trying something new. And that's what we did here. All right, so right there, what you just saw me do, that was the sketch lifting stage. So now that I've gotten the background and the character all in black and white to the point where I like them, now what I do is, because basically I've painted all these black and white, but now what I need to do is I need to make the whites transparent, transparent. And so what I do is I do the sketch lift stage. And actually, you know what, I'll just go ahead and I'll put a link. I'm gonna have to go through here and put like 10 links, but click this video if you'd like to go see the tutorial on sketch lifting, how to turn your white colors blank or uh, see-through so you can put colors behind it. So click this if you wanna go see that tutorial. Alrighty then, alrighty then. I gotta remember all these things. Okay, but see how I laid that color right behind it and it just see it's like see-through, but you still have the values in there. That's what sketch lifting does. So now we're moving on to what I call the downhill. You've done all the work, you've laid the foundation, okay? So don't stress, don't stress. You've laid the foundation, time to start putting in the colors, putting in your masks and begin lighting your piece, begin adding the color to your piece. And I knew from the very beginning what I wanted my color palette to be. I wanted it to look like this. I was constantly referring back to this because I just loved the green coming in through the windows. And I really like specifically like up here, see how this bounce light, this reflected light is like interacting with the cream color of the wall. I really liked that. That was what I was really going for right there. And just how it interacts with everything in the piece here. And then the really cool like yellow, like the really warm yellow light on the side there. That was what I wanted to make sure that I included in the piece. So now I'm laying out my masks uh, and I'm separating them by materials. Like if you check down here, check out the layers, see how they're each uh, labeled differently. And for those of you who are curious about going in depth on this, we will go in depth, so don't worry. We'll kind of click through this. And the PSD will be available on Patreon after the video. You can go pledge and you can get this PSD for yourself. Check out all the layers for yourself. So, but I will click through them if you're curious how those work, okay? But, okay, so I'm laying in masks, but you'll notice that I'm using interesting colors for those masks. Mika has pink hair, but notice how I'm not painting straight pink. I'm painting like this dark kind of reddish color, almost like, and everything is very desaturated. Now this has to do with kind of step one of relative color, is that you wanna make sure that you're working with a color palette that is already kind of, it's already, um, cohesive, it's already, it already feels like it belongs together. You don't wanna paint local color just yet. And local color is a fancy way of saying the real color. Like if there was a bright white light shining on Mika, her hair would be very pink, but here it's like a dark red. We're gonna be talking about why that happens. That's specifically what I wanna talk about today once this time lapse is finished. But you can see how I'm just laying in my lights and I figured out early on uh, how I wanted my light sources to be. In fact, oh, perfect, I just paused that at the exact right time. That's, I mean, I totally planned that. I totally planned that. So anyway, <laughs> I was taking breaks this entire time because this is another thing. I always tell you guys that you need to take breaks. Please take your breaks because it'll save your hand. It'll save your, more importantly, it'll save your mind. Okay, because doing this stuff is hard work. You got, when you start rendering and lighting your pieces, you got a lot on your mind. So what I did was during one of my breaks, I said, okay, so I'm already kind of, I was starting to struggle, right? I was starting to struggle with figuring out exactly where I wanted the piece to go. So very quickly, I just made a new layer on top and I said, okay, this is what I want my light sources to be. So I've got the green lights coming in from the left. I've got the yellow light coming in from the right, right? And these are gonna be 
uh, rim lights. So I drew lines, notice I just drew quick lines along where I wanted those rim lights to happen, where I wanted them to be the most prominent. And then we have a warm light coming from the front because I imagine on the other side of this couch, there's like another lamp that's shining and it's gonna give us a little bit of that color. It's gonna give us a little bit of a, like a front ambient color. So doing that, I went on break for 30 minutes and then I came back and then I realized, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I, my mind was refreshed and I was ready to go. So that is my whole spiel on breaks and why everybody should be taking them. And uh, yeah, you'll have a good time with that. So now that I have figured out my lights, now I'm going back in, I'm going back in and now I'm starting to light my piece very, very subtly, especially in the front light because I don't wanna make it too bright. I especially don't wanna make it brighter than the background here because remember, that is our, that is our biggest source of light. That is the most true brightest form of light. And really quickly, let me explain to you guys what happens, right? This is how you make something look bright in your piece, how you make something look like it's a bright light source. And the way that you do that is not necessarily by making it pure white. Notice how this color back here in these windows is not pure white, it's just a very light green. But the way that you make it look bright is by the contrast, by the contrast of everything else that is going to be inside, inside. So you notice that all the colors, that, and this goes back into why I picked those dark colors for Mika's masks. Because by picking those dark colors, it still, it reinforces what we are doing with our lighting. It's reinforcing the exposure. But we'll go more into that in a minute. In fact, I got a really cool tutorial. I hope you guys brace yourselves because we're catching up. Like we took last week off, so we got a lot to catch up on. Might be a longer daily, might be a longer daily, but I'm sure you guys don't mind that. I'm sure you guys don't mind that. So now we're going into line coloring, line coloring. And this is also something that is really handy from sketch lifting. Remember how we uh, made the whites all transparent? And now we can go in there and we can technically paint not only the lines, but the values, the values that we laid in. We can paint those. And um, yeah, you guys have seen me do this many a time. And uh, it just allows you to begin softening your lines. It allows you to begin softening your lines and making them disappear into thin air. The magician, right? You get to make your lines disappear by coloring them. And that's just a good old time. So we color the lines, soften them up. Now I'm adding in some more lights over here. But notice how I want to direct your attention back down to the layers here. Now, do you see how all of these things, see these layers, there's like skin, eyes, white, hair, you know, all of these things are separated out. And that allows you to go in there and focus on one thing at a time. Because it might be kind of uh, tempting for you to be like, okay, I don't wanna deal with all that. Let's just put all these colors on one layer. See, but then the problem arises when you wanna go in here and you want to light just the hair, but then some of that pink like spills onto the arm. You know, you want to focus on one material at a time. And that's why if you look down here, all these layers are separated out. And it really helps with your lighting phase because then it allows you to just focus on one thing at a time and say, okay, we've got this yellow light back here. How's that affecting the hair? Okay, do that. How is it affecting the arm? Okay, we're done with that. How is it affecting this little white piece of the, I don't know, the made head piece, you know, and then you can do that. So really strongly advise you guys that when you do stuff like this, when you begin lighting your character or coloring your character, separate out all the different materials, separate out the hair, the skin, the clothes, and basically, basically anything that's just a different color. The couch, however, I think is all just one layer because it's all just kind of one material. And it's more, like I figured I could get away with it because it's more of a supportive piece, it's more of a supportive piece. Not as much going on as there is with Mika here. So. Yeah, so I like that. That's why I recommend masks. And now we're gonna begin going into the overpainting stage, the overpainting stage. So you can see right here, the layer is called OP, and that is not just because it is overpowered, but because it is the overpainting layer. And now I'm going to begin really going in there and sculpting out, sculpting out the nose, sculpting out exactly how this ridge works and the eye lights, you know, just really starting to make my lines disappear. And uh, I always like this stage because it's a delicate dance. It is a delicate dance of preserving what was there, preserving what was in the original drawing without changing it up too much, right? Because you want to, you want to sculpt this face, right? You want to get rid of all the lines and you want it to make it look, you want it to look nice and smooth and nice and pretty, right? But a problem that I run into all the time, and you'll see her face flickering on and off every now and then, 
is that I'll go in and I will overpaint something, but then I will completely change the face. It'll change the face from what it originally looked like. And sometimes it for the worse. In fact, oftentimes it's for the worse. And that is where I want to caution you guys that when you go into the overpainting stage, make sure that it is on its own layer. That way you can click it on and off and check like the changes that you've made to uh, each part of the face, uh, specifically in the face. Um, because a lot can change from just tiny little adjustments, tiny little adjustments. So that's why, again, you can see her face flickering on and off because I'm trying to preserve the original look, the original sketch, uh, or just the original drawing that I like, the original character that was in her face. So I'm always trying to watch out for that, all right? So, all right, whew, man, just a total, I know I'm giving you an earful today, but that's what you guys deserve because we took a little bit of a break over New Year's. And how was your New Year's, by the way? Mine was awesome. I had my best friend in town, had an awesome party, you know, and Christmas was great too because it was everybody that I wanted to be here. It wasn't like, you know, the crazy like family get together where you see your uncle that, you know, nobody really likes. In fact, nobody even invited him. He just somehow knows that the party's there and he shows up. You got your like crazy cousins. You know, there's a bunch of people that you don't necessarily want to see, but fortunately, this Christmas was not like that. I had everybody that I wanted to be there and nobody that I didn't want to be there. And it was a really, it was cool, right? Because it was the first Christmas that I actually had in my own home. And I had, uh, I was looking all over the place for like a fake Christmas tree. Looking all over the place for a fake Christmas tree. In fact, there's kind of a sad story behind that. But um, <laughs> in fact, this is probably the nail in the coffin. Um, oh yeah, and I'm, okay. And before I go on this tangent, I'm putting on the noise layer. Uh, we're finally finishing up, right? Finally finishing everything up. And oh, also photo effects. Photo effects, that's another thing I need to talk about. Um, and we'll go into that. But it's probably gonna give you a seizure if you look at this, so please don't, don't look at it for too long. All right, so story time. Story time about Christmas. I was looking for a fake Christmas tree. And I kid you not, I went to Lowe's, right? And because I am such a, I'm such a polite, I'm such a polite little boy, right? And I kind of have, a, a lot of people have told me I have a bit of a feminine tone to my voice. I went up to a man, right, working in the store, and I said this, I said exactly like this. I was like, um, excuse me, exactly like that. And you see how that might be misconstrued for like maybe a woman? Because I said this, I was like, um, excuse me. And then the man turns around, or, or before he even turns around, he's like, Yes, ma'am. And then he looks at me and he's like, I mean, sir. And I was like, oh, dude. I was like, oh. It was like, this was like really awkward, right? It was really awkward. I was about to ask you for a freaking tree, but um, I, I mean, I didn't like give him a hard time. I was like, he probably had a long day. I know I have a very sexy feminine voice, so you know, whatever, I'll let it pass. But anyway, I was looking for a fake tree and I looked all over the place for one because I wanted one that was like, LED, but I don't like like the crappy looking LED ones that are out nowadays. I don't know, maybe some of you like the LEDs, but I personally don't. I like the old ceramic bulbs, like the old school, like ones that get really hot, you can't touch them, otherwise it like burns your hand. So um, anyway, I was looking all over for something that kind of mimicked that look. And um, I couldn't find anything, I couldn't find anything. And I looked for weeks and weeks, I went to Home Depot and then eventually Lowe's, right? And they were all sold out, all of them were sold out. And then of course the guy calling me a, a freaking chick, you know, that was the nail in the coffin. I was like, you know what, forget it, forget it. I'm just gonna get a regular, I'm just gonna get a regular tree. I'm gonna get a real tree. And then I went out and got, uh, there's a nursery just down the street, went and got a real tree and it was freaking amazing. I loved it, it was awesome. And then I went and got the actual ceramic bulbs and it didn't catch the tree on fire and it didn't burn the whole house down. So that was a good thing. All right, story time's done. Story time's done, people. It's time to get into now that you guys have sat through that entire thing, I know this thing is going long today. We got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Uh, okay, we're gonna talk about relative color. Now the actual tutorial can begin. So I hope that catches you up. I hope you, that makes you feel good about everything that you missed. Let's talk about first that setup. Let's talk about that setup first because we got Mika back here and we got couch right here. All right, oh cool, everything is on its own layer. And once again, this will be available on Patreon. This will be available on Patreon, but let's go ahead and go through this. Okay, so here is, I'm just gonna take these layers off one at a time. So you can see this is like a shine layer for the hat, or not the hat, the, the hair. And then you got like little things here. These are all just little tiny 
um, overpaintings, overpaint, overpaint, overpaint. Okay, so now we're back. We've taken off all the overpaints and this takes us to our lines, it takes us to our lines. So if we remove the lines, you're gonna get something very scary looking. Uh, it is going to turn into this uh, crazy looking ghost woman. Uh, but luckily the lines take care of all that. But let's talk about coloring the lines. Let's talk about coloring the lines. Now I want you guys to take a look at this layer 10. This is the colors of the line that have been clipped back they're clipped back to layer five, which is our lines, okay? But if I unclip that, take a look at what this is. See, it's actually a clown. It's actually a clown woman that somehow turns into a cute little maid girl, right? But besides that point, besides that point, <laughs> this is what I'm doing with the line colors. So see, there's like reds in here. There's like oranges in here. And then we clip all that back. And then the lines, right, they take on those colors. They take on the colors and that makes us soften the lines. Oh yeah, and let me turn this on and off. So you can see what that's doing. You can see exactly what that's doing. And then the lines themselves are all see-through because if we take away this, and let's take away like the background and everything. Take away everything. Uh, even that. See how the lines are all transparent. And that again is sketch lifting. And you guys already saw where to go to that. It's a couple of episodes ago. You can go check it out. Okay, so that clears all that stuff up. Um, let's go into, uh, let's go ahead and go back to where this was. Okay, so now let's talk about relative color. Let's talk about relative color. And for that, we're gonna need Big Head Mika. So let's go ahead and get Big Head Mika out here. And let's take off these noise layers. Probably can't see the difference on YouTube, but whatever. That's okay. Let's go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. Let's talk about relative color. Okay guys, so I want you to take a look at this skin, right? If you look at the skin, you say, oh well, isn't that nice? It's a cute little, you know, tan skin. And I want you guys to, to ask yourselves, okay, if I were to paint this character, if I were to paint this character, I would look at this and I would say, okay, what color is Mika's hair? It's pink, right? So let's go ahead and grab pink, right? There's pink. And we're gonna start painting that, okay? Let's make a new layer. And let's start painting pink in the, oh, what, why is that wrong? Why is that looking weird? Oh, maybe we just need to make it darker, right? Maybe we just may, need to make it darker. Oh, but now that looks kind of purple. Why is that? You know, and this is the beginning of the tutorial. This is relative color, ladies and gentlemen, relative color. Now, the way that this works is because we talked earlier about our exposure, exposure, right? because we have brightness coming from the outside. Look at what color we're using here. We have this very light green. We have very light green. It's time for me to tell you guys a little bit about bright colors. And for this, we're gonna go into a little bit of a, an exercise, okay? So exercise time. And we're gonna be talking about balls, right? Because balls are very important. You can learn everything you need to know with balls. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so you have a red ball here, right? And let's say that this is obviously going to be lit like, oh, let's go ahead and light our ball, okay? Light our ball. So if you were to place a light on here, right? If you were to place a light on the ball, it would do something like this, right? And that's all well and good, right? Now, if I were to say, okay, that's cool, but now let's take that same ball and let's apply a brighter light to it. What is actually going to happen to that? What is gonna to happen to that ball? Well, you would say, okay, well, let's just make the color brighter, right? Let's make it brighter. And because of uh, color temperature, color temperature is another thing uh, that I need to get into, but in, in short, you're going to hue shift, hue shifting, and that happens with light. Light causes things to hue shift. And in this case, we're gonna be going from red, and the way that you increase the temperature of red is by pushing it more towards yellow, okay? So if you have a bright light shining on the same ball, rather what you're going to see is something like this. Now do you see how that now appears to be a brighter light? In fact, you probably have a little bit of a subsurface thing happen there too. So now you have a bright light. Let's say it was a super bright light. It's gonna actually start blowing out. It is going to blow out to yellow and then eventually to white, okay? So this is lesson one of exposure, exposure, okay? Now, 
the human eye has this thing where it likes to preserve, it likes to, whatever it's looking at, it wants to see the truest color possible. So if your eye was subjected to this ball being lit by a bright light, what it wants to do, it wants to bring it back to this color. It wants to bring it back here to see this red, because that is, in your mind, the true color. And this is my way of explaining it. I'm sure there's probably a much more proper scientific way to do it. But in general, it wants to see that red. So what it does is your pupils will close. Your pupils will uh, shrink down and let in less light. They'll let in less light. So here's what's gonna happen, guys. Check this out. Whoops, not that. Um, so rather, what you're going to do is you're gonna allow less light in here from the light source, and it's gonna take you right back to that red. But check this out. Because you're now letting in less light, the shadow, the shadow part of the ball is now going to become very, very dark. It's gonna become very dark because not only are you letting in less light from the bright part of the ball, you're letting in less light from the shadow. What little light is in the shadow is now going to be even less. So rather what you're gonna see is something like this, okay? And even more so, even like a greater, you know, brighter super, like if it was like this, it would actually almost look like black. It would probably look something more like this, okay? So that is how our eyes compensate for a bright light. It will actually darken shadows, it darkens shadows. So if you look at the difference between this ball on the left, if you look at the difference between this ball on the left and this ball on the right, say they're the same material, but just because of the contrast between the light and the shadow, you would say, okay, there's a brighter light shining on this one versus here, right? This is a soft light, that's okay, but here it's a very dark light or a very bright light. And that takes us to relative color. That takes us all the way back to Mika, okay? And that is why when you select these colors, look, look at this, it's like you look at this color. Sorry, I totally spoiled it. So you look at this color and you say, okay, that is pink hair. This is tan skin. This is a white cloth, but rather the actual colors that we're seeing or the actual colors that we're working with are this, look at this, it's a very dark red, very interesting. And then the skin, it's, you say it's tan, but it's a dark orange. Look at how low on the spectrum this is. Look at how low that is. Even the white cloth, it's actually a very dark yellow. And this is what I want you guys to start thinking about with your color picking or your color choices, relative color. That's what this is all about today. Um, keeping in mind your shadows and your exposure and always keeping in mind the, like the pupil trick. Always think about how much light is in this picture and how would my pupils, or in this case, you know, even the camera, camera exposure works the same way. You leave the lens open, it lets in more light and it would blow out, you know, like it, it allows things to become brighter, right? Um, or actually wait, yeah, if you let too much light in, then this whole piece, like imagine this was a camera, here's what would happen. If you wanted this character to be brighter, in fact, this will actually show right here. Let's say we wanted everything to be brighter in this piece, right? But see, as the character gets brighter, see how now we're letting in more light here and now it starts to blow out, it starts to blow out to white. See how that is? And yet this is how a camera would work. This is how exposure works. But see, now we let in less light through our pupils. Our pupils are now shrinking down, letting in less light from the window, but simultaneously it's making the shadows darker as well, okay? Because everything has to follow that same rule, okay? So that takes us to here. All right, cool. I think that was the best explanation of relative color and exposure I've ever done. I hope that made sense to you guys. So before we take off, before we take off, I feel like there was something else I needed to talk about. Eb, eb, I can't remember right now. So, okay, yeah, we talked about light, talked about that tutorial. I think we're good. I think we're good, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so um, yeah, that's why all these colors right here are dark and they're a little bit, um, yeah, they're not exactly what they appear to be. They're all darker, they're all darker, and that's because of the exposure. Exposure, exposure, exposure. And there's all kinds of other little things in here, but I don't wanna like blow your minds like completely open today. Just wanted to focus on one thing. Just wanted to focus on one thing for you guys today. Um, but before we wrap up, um, 
Yeah, before we wrap up, let me talk about a couple things that I really liked in this piece. One is I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed picking out the colors for this. And a lot of you might look at this and be like, well, how did you know? How did you know to pick those colors? How did you know to pick this dark red for the pink hair? And a lot of that has to do with laying in colors and trusting your eyes, trusting your eyes. So let's go way the heck back here. Let's go way the heck back here to the original Mika. Here we go. So a lot of this has to do with, yeah, okay, this is, this is gonna actually help you guys out a lot. So I would lay in color. See, this is when I take away the hair, it's you know just the lines and I put in the hair like this. And so a lot of you might be tempted to say, okay, well, let's start painting our character. Okay, well, she has pink hair, so let's go ahead and lay in pink. Oh, and do you immediately see how that looks wrong? Now here's step two, or here's part two of why separating out all of your layers is really gonna help you out. Because then you can do this. You can take your, you can hit control U and you can control this layer. You can say, okay, well that doesn't look right. Let's go ahead and darken it down. And then you notice as you get to a certain value, as you get it dark enough or light enough, it starts to look proper. But then you might say, oh, okay, it still looks too saturated. Well, it's desaturated. Okay, oh, that looks pretty good. But now it looks kind of like purpley. I want it to be more pink. So now let's play around with the hue. And then you kind of move this back and forth and you fine tune it. You fine tune it to the point where you want it. And this has to do with, this is how you experiment. This is how you experiment with your piece, experiment with your colors and learn really. That's, that's what this is all about, learning. But I would highly urge you guys to not always rely on it. Don't always rely on the hue tool to do this. So the way that you get around this, or rather learn from this actually, is once you find the color that you want, always go back in there and say, okay, what color was that actually? What color was that? And then you say, oh, it was this dark red. You pay attention to where the hue uh, line is. Is it in the purples? Is it blue? Is it red? And then ask yourself, oh, okay, wow, it's really dark. And then that's interesting. And then recall everything that you learned from today and you say, why is that that dark? And then you would say, it looks proper because we have this bright light in the window. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of the tutorial. I gave you guys a freaking earful today. I hope you guys can digest that. I really hope you guys can digest that. But uh, if you want to, oh yeah, one last thing before we go. If you want to see this PSD for yourself, then it will be available on the Patreon. You can go ahead and just click that picture, click that picture right there if you want to go to the Patreon, support and download the PSD as well as all the other PSDs from episodes past, from Christmas's past. You can check it out, look through all the layers for yourself and see, and see what I have done. All righties, ladies and gentlemen, all righties, whatever. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show, but before we go, I wanna say thank you to my amazing sponsors. Laura Bashir and David Chiariello. I love these people so much. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show. Keeping the lights running at night. And uh, yeah, making this year very special. I'm looking forward to an amazing 2016 with you guys. Thank you to everyone who has been watching the show, subscribing, telling your friends about it. I really hope that this show brings value to you guys and I'm looking forward to doing more with you. All right, so with that, we're out of here. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya. Whoops. Oh. Okay, it's like New Year. I got, I got this. I got this. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. There we go. There we go. All right. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye.